On today's episode, the Cubs streak is over as they lose to the Red Legs. News and notes, including a preview of Tuesday's matchup with a little bit of a wrinkle. And could Willie Harris be on his way to the south side? That's all ahead on a Tuesday edition of Locked on Cubs. Locked on Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Cubs. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Pleased to be with you for a Tuesday episode of the show. And thanks for being along for the ride on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your pods. Always appreciate it. We're your first listen uh, every day at all things North Side. The Cubs streak of seven wins in a row does come to a close. It does not become eight as the Cubs fall to the Reds three to nothing Monday night in what was not the Great American Small Park, a very low-scoring game, but a pretty cool pitching matchup as it was Wisniewski against Hunter Green. Sam, a few different things on tap for the show today. We are going to start with the ball game. Uh, How's everything going today? Actually, in a very odd way, kind kind of a positive glass half full for me for a change. I couldn't even have this broom up all off season. I don't even own it. It's my roommates. I would have had to go out buy a new broom okay. um, be, 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 because I'll be moving in a few months. And, and so I think the Cubs just lost this game for me. Ha, it's that funny. Anyway, uh, look, Hunter Green's really good. Yeah. Um, I think he's got a chance to be one of the best pitchers in baseball. I tweeted that out. I mean, his repertoire is unmatched. Um, I actually said that before we ever did our first show. Um, you and I, I was on with Jeff. We did a, a crossover and he Jeff was a little, Carr. yeah, he was a little, the host of the lockdown reds Lockdown pod, reds. Yeah. And he was a little concerned at the time of, of Hunter green. I said, I, I'll take him off your hands. Are you kidding me? I mean, this guy is when he, he's one of those pitchers when he is on, you could have the, an all-star lineup. They don't have a chance. So it is what it is. Uh, I thought Wisniewski threw the ball fairly well again. I, I I think his ERA is really good, and I think it should be better. He's gotten bit by the Babip gods a little bit. Um, I, I told you I was a little concerned about this start last night. It would be a good test. He passed the test with flying colors. Take it. Move on. Yeah, Hunter Green has the potential to be really good. He's got a high ceiling. I know in the early days of taking over the show, we had kind of – uh, or maybe it was really just your appearance with with Jeff that first time. It was more of like, hey, the Reds have the young pitchers, the Cubs don't. Right. Interesting how you know that's that's uh, evolved a little bit over the it last has. couple. Months. It has. The Cubs don't have a guy with that repertoire, though. Right. No, they don't. And and, and most people don't. Most people don't. He's hitting a hundred every almost every fastball. The last start I watched him, he was sitting one hundred two. He was sitting 102 or sitting. stopping? No, no. He was sitting 101-102. His last start. I forget who it was against. Jeez. Well, in this start, he went six scoreless, two hits, one walk, eight Ks. Wisniewski also went six innings. Uh, well. He allowed four hits, two runs. Only one of them was earned. One walk. He threw well. And six Ks. Uh, maybe a preview of a little bit of uh, good oh, matchups in 2023 and beyond. You'll be seeing, this won't be the first time you see that pitching matchup. And, for the uh, last yeah, time, you know the Reds do have some some thoroughbreds. Graham Ashcraft gets it up there as well. No, but Hunter uh, Green's different. Hunter Green is just a different a different type of an animal with that. Uh, he's got a great repertoire, like you said. And uh, I thought it was a pretty cool matchup for this late in the year. Can I, the Reds are on the verge of triple dig in uh, losses. I, you want to know what I learned from this game? Big picture. Yeah, I don't think Manny Rodriguez deserves to be in the mix in the spring. Oh, there we go. Um. His his velocity today was like ninety two. He yeah. was throwing a hundred last year. His his FIP tells you is really bad. His K's per nine is really bad. His walks per nine is bad. His ERA is flattering. I don't think he's pitched well at all this year, and I don't think he has a place in the in the bullpen next year unless something dramatically changes. Well, he got back to the big leagues curiously quick. Yeah, I don't know need, if that has anything to do with it, but he he's, just he's not passing the eye test for me. I don't like what I'm saying. No, he's not. He's not. Uh, he's not pitching comes, well. When he comes in, in, I shield my eyes. 
Do you really? It's that no. bad? No, no, but y- you know what I meant. Okay, all right. And that's my Robert De Niro impression. You ever the heard Cubs Don, only Don posted. Rickles do that? Um, I don't know. A little mumbling. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, hey, the uh, top 100 TV shows, Rolling Stone put out a list last week. I just want to let you know, Carson and Letterman were on there. As they should be. Top 100. Was Jay time. Leno not on there? Because if, if so, that'd be great. He was not. Good. Overrated not. host. Uh, Cubs only posted two hits. Perhaps only the uh, strong threat they really had was second and ninth. third, one out, top six. Well, on the ninth, too. Suzuki hit it hard, but lined into a double play. Yeah, he hit as, uh, hard the Cubs are now 38 and 30 in the second half. Sam, here's Wisniewski's uh, final MLB numbers. Ready? Six yes. appearances, four starts, 218 ERA with 33 strikeouts and seven walks. In 33 innings pitch, that'll do. A flat A. Didn't know he was going to pitch this year. Um, you know, we talked about even on the day of the trade that he could pitch even that weekend. He's close. It turns out he was real close and he was uh, real impressive. Mound presence is great. Attitudes great. Listening to him talks great. Sweeping sliders great. Um, guy, I'm really high on. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so two more games in the seasons in the uh, series and the season. And, Isn't that uh, weird, Matt? You know, it I think, is. I've been I starting think to hosting, think a little bit ahead, and it is weird. It, I think hosting this show makes the season go by faster because uh, it's July. Uh, it feels like we still just got the show. Really? Yeah, it's you know we It'll got be the show. three months on Wednesday. Yeah, that's. Um, Wow. Isn't that crazy? Three month anniversary. I mean, I remember, yeah, I remember the night before we got it. I was at Taco Bell. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, listen, let's not be too sentimental. I mean, I understand you got the chain. (laughs) I understand you got the chain back, but listen. Oh, that's funny, man. It only took you two months to get it back. Yeah. No, I I got it fixed. But uh, congrats on that as well. Thank you. Hey, we preview Tuesday's game and more. Coming up next, first, we wanted to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. We love having Bet Online as a partner, and they're your number one source for all football betting info this season. Sam, any early line on Bears and Vikings? I saw it already. Minneapolis. Yeah, I saw it already. It's going to be Minnesota by a touchdown. Minnesota by a touchdown. And I take Minnesota. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sport wagering info with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB. MMA, boxing, and golf, head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Let's do some some odds for uh, our Cubbies. And courtesy of Bet Online, Tuesday night's matchup is Assad versus Sessa Sam, Cubs Jeez. Reds. Uh, first, what do you think is the over under in that ball game? Over under on runs, Assad versus Sessa. <sighs> Remember, this is an, uh, predominantly an audio medium. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, sorry. Um, eight and a half? It's going to be eight flat. Okay. Eight flat. Good, great guess. And uh, we do have some some underdog and uh, favorites here. Cincinnati minus 120. Cincinnati minus 115. Very good. Yeah, thank you. And the Cubs are plus... Well, then that would make the Cubs, what, plus, plus like 105, 110? That's correct. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Plus well, 105. That, 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 that's not an impressive guess. That's Once courtesy you... of Bet Online, uh, where the game starts. Cubs that's Kittle with a big catch. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Had something out of the background. Go there. Hawks. No. Yeah, no, no, no. I we will be George Kittle. Yeah, yeah, no, we get it. And uh, we'll be announcing some exciting information later this week. Sam really I, exciting. Really exciting. Uh, regarding football. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do that later this week. That's what they call a tease in the business. Yeah. yeah. And um, Nelson Velasquez. I wanted to get into him a bit, Sam. Oh, really? As okay. we take some stock 
into maybe uh, the percentage game again on opening day roster stuff. Yeah, it's a, you know what? He's a really good one. Last seven games, slash line of 364, 533, 818 with three walks and six RBIs. Wow. Um, six RBI, excuse me. He's only hitting 203 on the year. Yeah, not quite. My guess is that uh, he will likely begin triple uh, 2023 in AAA. Um, but he was on the big league roster for initially longer, way longer than I thought. Yeah, I, 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 I echo every single thing you just said. I would say the percentage that he's on the big league roster next to, to open the year would probably be below 30 for me. Um, I think starting at AAA, I think he showed some things. I'm not giving up on him just yet. Um, I think right. he showed some things. He's not a center fielder. He proved that. Um, yeah. But he's got a lot of power. He just needs to utilize that power more, and he has a pretty good eye. So there's a lot of tools to work with there. I just think if the Cubs are really serious about winning next year, they'll have upgrades, and they will not need him on the opening day roster. Yeah, they'll have upgrades for sure. I, I don't think he really projects. Definitely as a center fielder, I think more of a left or right fielder type, maybe some right. ABs at DH, but again, it just highlights um, a good problem to have. If that's how you want to phrase it. Well, yeah, they got a lot of outfielders, man, you know, especially at the corner outfield position. Well, and that's the thing um, too, there's a lot Matt. of depth. And, and that's the thing too. And, and I, I am by no means saying to get rid of Velasquez. I'm just using him as an example. Let's say at the deadline next year, you are looking for a really high level reliever. Okay. He is a guy that you could flip. And assuming, let's say he hits really well at AAA, I think he's about 22 years old, 23 years old. He's young, yeah. Even though he does isn't isn't featured right now in the Brennan Davis, PCA, Alcantara, Canario list, right. that is still a valuable enough prospect for a rebuilding team to flip right, a, right. a Scott Efros or a Chris Martin at the deadline. So those yep. guys, even though – we could we gloss over them will be part uh, of helping the Cubs if they are buyers next year or the year after. Yeah, that's a great point. If he if he crushes it even in Triple A, that's perhaps a team could could use. They're all that. assets. Yeah, you know, you stack up a bunch of assets and then later you figure out how to you know categorize them. Right. It's like a uh, a puzzle. Were you ever into puzzles as a, as a child? No. Okay. That doesn't surprise me at all. Um, yeah, the, the Cubs puzzle for 2023 is definitely, you know, I feel like it takes shape every day. I've never in my life completed a puzzle. Right. And you have no desire to do that, right? I never, I never will. I think it's probably past the turning point for you on that. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I would, I would think so. Um, and then finally, some other news and notes here. Uh, just wanted to let you know about an MLB. So we did the the mailbag on Monday's episode. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's been, it's been doing real well. Um, there was a mailbag question to MLB Pipeline over the weekend, Sam. And it was about Matt Mervis, everybody's favorite prospect. Mm -hmm. uh, Mervis, by the way, finished with 36 home runs, 40 doubles, and 119 runs batted in. Yeah. Uh, just in case anybody's keeping track. And the question was about, hey, if, what do you think about Mervis? And why is he ranked so low? You know, how is a guy that's just putting yeah, up I think video we talked about stats, that. No. Not in the top 100 in the league. Right. And he's only 21 on the Cubs list. You know, the Cubs have one of the deeper systems in the game. But yeah, still. and that'll go up at the end of the year when they redo it. But, yes. Well, here we go. If re-ranked right now, he would not be top 100 in the league. Stupid but would be top 15 as uh, as he's currently 21, he would go up in the top 15. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about this on the show. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I think it's just going after the fact that he was undrafted in the COVID year and he wasn't a highly touted prospect and they're, and, and they're categorizing his breakout as more of a fluke than, than something that's sustainable. But for the Cubs, it absolutely is worth bringing him up um, next year to start an opening day and seeing that if, if if it isn't now of course there's counters to everything you could say well what if it was just like Schwindel's streak and then and then next year he's not very good well it's worth the try he's like 24 yeah and one thing that we didn't necessarily touch on in the episode last week was um his defense 
And I know we got a couple of comments about that and, and kind of just doing some more research. You know, he didn't really even play much first base at Duke. He pitched a lot. He DH'd a lot. Yeah. But at first base, is it's not like the – you've seen Moneyball, right? Of course. You know, that there's some classic lines in there about playing the first base position. Right. Um, I'm not going to dismiss that position at all. It's the big leagues. Yeah. But – I think for the power numbers he puts up, you're going to be okay if he's league average defensively, right? Well, the comments that he's not good defensively? Is that what you're insinuating? No, but that just that he's raw. Yeah, I mean... No, no, there's no there's no comments that he's poor there. It's just that the, 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 the key jury's him, out. The key with him and the eye test is, is, is digging out balls. Like, that's to me, that's Ooh, what's like really that. important, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you got to be able... I mean, you got to be Get able to short dig hop. out... Yeah, get those short hops and, you know, whoever's at short. But the Cubs should have a pretty solid infield defense next year. So hopefully the throws will be fairly accurate. He won't have to do much. And, yeah, I mean, right. if you're going to hide a guy, you play him at first. We know this. Yeah, yeah, or left or left field's kind of the other spot in baseball right. where you could hide somebody. Right, right. Um, Tony La Russa. Still worth it. Still worth it bringing him up. Maybe, Tony La Russa yeah. is officially out as the White Sox manager. They are opening up their managerial search once again, and perhaps a certain Cubs third base coach could be a candidate. We get into that coming up next. We're back here on Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day and uh, giving it to you all things North Siders, red and blue, boys of summer, boys in blue. Boys uh, Cubs, summer. Cubs wore their... Um, I haven't made any Chicago references lately. You haven't made one since uh, like mid August. Yeah, I don't know. 25 or 6 2 4. <laughs> Boy, do I love the road gray jerseys the Cubs have. Yeah, we could do a whole than... episode on that next month. We got a they're, lot of them. They're better than the blue. Yes, 100%. Maybe we could do 20 minutes on that. Um, Saturday. So the White Sox have opened the up their. Their Make managerial the search. Fourth of July. And Cubs third base coach Willie Harris. No way. Been, uh, named to the list of candidates. He's, no I saw a list of 10 candidates from Sox on 35th. They had Willie Harris on there. Uh -uh. Uh, Willie Harris began his pro coaching career with the Pale Hose system in 2016. That went from the Giants to the Reds to the Cubs, where his first season was 2020. He's always been over there at third with the Cubs. Uh, he is apparently held in high regard as a future manager. Uh, there's been good comments from players, from David Ross. Uh, is is this guy truly a candidate for this type well, of job? I, thi I think he was the one guy they interviewed besides La Russa last time, or do I have that wrong? No, no, I don't believe so. Oh, they, they didn't They didn't or, or interview I Willie thought it Harris? was A.J. Hinch. Let me, let me, let me, I, I'm almost positive. I feel like I would have gotten that during my homework. I, I don't think so. Let me, uh, Unless he had a conversation with them. I, I was not aware of that at all. All right. Maybe I made it up. But, but I know AJ Hinch was in the mix. They even had a press release written out um, that he didn't get the job because the owner stepped in. Um, Hold on, I'm pulling something up from the athletic here. I, I thought, I thought Willie Harris. Um, was a candidate. Anyways, the White Sox like him. I think it'd be a huge mistake if they hired him. The White uh, the White Sox need a guy. Well, there's that, so that, many people available. The White Sox need a guy to command. To to, to you know, Liam Hendricks said it today. Uh, uh, with Jesse Rogers, they need they need a, a strict manager with these young guys. Uh, Willie Harris would come in here and be everybody's best friend, high fiving everybody <laughs> like he does. Whiz. I just don't think the fit makes a lot of sense. But I'm not in charge, and I don't care who they pick. Okay. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of names on this list. Um, you know, Bruce Bochy and Freddie Gonzalez are getting talked about a lot. Uh, but there's certainly plenty of people out there. Maybe there's a future role with the White Sox for Harris. Yeah, whatever. Um, even if he doesn't get the manager job, maybe a bench coach or something. Yeah. Um, just seems know. like a reach based on what we know, right? It's a reach. And can I make one point on our manager real quick? It's a reach. Sure. I've been seeing a lot of stuff on Twitter, and, and we'll do an episode on this, so I'm just going to tease it. 
Right. I've been seeing a lot of stuff on Twitter about how everybody that's been on David Ross and calling for his firing dessert, uh, uh, should, should give him, you know, needs to apologize because of this. Win oh, streak. so, and so and, you and, might, you might apologize. Absolutely not. Um, I never once called for David Ross's firing ever. Oh no, no, no. I just said I didn't think he was doing a very good job with this team and that they were capable of winning more games than they were winning. Now they're finally winning those games. David Ross does a nice job, has everybody play hard and all that stuff. He will be fully evaluated as a manager in the 2023 season. That that will be the year. If, if that team plays to its expectations, then he'll be the manager in 24. If they don't, there's a good chance he won't be. I never... I never insinuated that I thought no, he should be fired. You have it. You have it. I just thought I just thought that he wasn't doing a great job when they were 25 30 under and I think that point's been proven that they have the ability to win games on this team. Absolutely. No, I think it's good analysis and it's uh, uh as usual well said by you. And Thank you. um yeah, hopefully no one's on trial on Twitter. Be sure to hit oh, that I've gotten a couple of DMs. Well, I don't doubt it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button on all your favorite Locked On Cubs content, Apple, Spotify, wherever else you get your pods. And please leave us a text this week. We love the mailbag on Monday, 312-834-4634. Thanks for making Locked On Cubs your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On MLB, where Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, Unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Sam, do you think Judge is going to hit 62 in the next two games? Yes. You do? Yes. Because someone grooves one in, or is he going to earn it? He's going to earn it. Okay. You could possibly hear about that on Locked on MLB, and uh, we may touch on that here as well. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked on Cubs.